One of the really cool things about the Games Workshop universe is the plethora of different weapons they've got. Outside of just guns, they've got a whole slew of awesome weaponry. Chief among those is power weapons. Now, those can be quite intimidating to paint, but they don't have to be. See you after this. Hi guys, and welcome back to another Forge of Solus Paints. This time, we're going to take a look at how I created the look of the power weapons in my Dark Angels army. If you've not seen that video, I'll link it up there, give it a look. I've had some really good feedback about how I created the power swords in particular, but this is applicable to any sort of power weapon. If you want to have that lightning, crackling, power looking, just, oh, badass, glowing effect, then I'm going to show you how to do it in a few easy steps. You can do this with a brush. I'm going to use an airbrush. Maybe I'll do a version with a brush and show you as well. Who knows? All it takes is a little bit of practice and it's a super easy technique. You'll be able to do it in 10 minutes. Okay, let's get to the paint desk. Well, here we are, let's jump right in. First thing I'm going to do is lay down some black as a base coat slash undercoat on the blade. And then just going to jump straight in once that's dry with some silver. I'm using Vallejo Aluminium here. It gives a really nice shine and everything else is kind of based on top of this. So whichever you, one you go with, make sure it's a nice shiny one. Leave it to dry fully and then we can get on to the next step. Airbrush time. First time we used is a dark purple. Right. So lay down thin coats here. What you don't want to do is reach full opacity. We want some of that really bright silver to be shining through. That's the entire base of this. That's why we use it in the first instance. So keep that paint finger nice and light. Some nice thin coats. You want to reach about half opacity with it. Don't go OTT. If you do, just go back a step, recover the silver and start again. Okay, next up, slightly lighter purple or whatever color you want. Now what we're going to do is spot this around where we want the, the primary glows to be. So around the power nodes in the case of this power sword. And then I do the tip of the sword and then two spots on opposite sides of the blade working up towards it. And then on the back side of it, I'll do the same with power nodes and then the opposite two spots. Okay, so we're going to jump up to another lighter version of the color we're using. Again, pink here. Going to hit the, the tip of the blade, the power nodes again working much tighter, more controlled this time. Make sure you test out on whatever surface you're working on, a bit of paper, whatever. Just make sure you've got good control of your airbrush and try and get these spots nice and tight. Work inside of the perimeter of the previous color. So we're getting smaller and smaller and smaller and that builds up the intensity of the glow. Don't get too close with the airbrush that you're getting spider webbing or you've got a really intense noticeable circle. The entire point of using the airbrush is that the transitions are nice and seamless. Give it some practice, once you've got it, you'll be fine. Really fast way to do this. Would you believe we're almost done? Okay, last point, white. I'm keeping the previous colors in my paint pot and uh, that helps the colors blend together. So this time, right at the end of the tip, white, power nodes, white, and then right in the middle of those two other spots we did on the blade, get those with white as well. Be really controlled here. Get the airbrush nice and close, low pressure. There we go, that's all you need. That's the airbrushing part done and dusted. Now this is the part that takes a little bit of time. What you want to do is jump back into the last color you used before the white. So in this case, it's the squid pink for me. Thin it 50-50 with water and whatever the color is and just draw in the lightning lines. So I tend to come from, from the power nodes and from the center of the white parts. So work really slowly, sketching them in, come back and then add more color to it. Don't worry about taking your time. This is where 95% of the time in this effect comes from. Look at some reference photos, get up on Google, get some lightning, and then just go wild really. Let your hand jitter a bit. You don't have to be too concerned about neatness here. Just use the tip of your brush. Go back, thicken them up. Bearing in mind, we're going to be coming in with the white in a moment. 
And that's going to be a lot, the part that really, really, really sells the effect. If you need to, like I say, come back and then reinforce it, especially if you've got two bits of the lightning crossing, that's where you want to make it a little bit darker, a little bit more intense. And it just adds another dimension to it. More layers, more texture. This is the last part now. So we're basically doing what we did before. Using a little bit of white thinned with water. And then I'm working on the inside of those lines that we drew with the lightning. I'm not even doing them all. I'm selecting which ones I want to pick out. And then laying a very thin line down. I'm going back multiple times, just sketching it in. That really kind of brings out the intensity, sells that lightning effect. Where well, you've got two parts of the lightning intersecting again, much like you would with edge eye lighting, just dot that part and it just sells the effect even more. If you want, you can even sketch in some additional lines. So very, very thinly, tip of the brush, so outside of the pink or whatever color you've chosen to use, just some small janky lines of lightning that don't connect to anything but come out of the center of the light source so the power nodes or the white parts or the tip of the sword and it just helps sell the effect it gives it a little bit more texture makes it look a little bit more real it's totally down to your personal preference just work slowly come back thin layers that's the key to it here guys the neatness is all down to the thin layers. You're sketching it in, you're building it up, so a mistake doesn't matter. You can always sell it as just another branch of lightning, not a problem, and just reinforce each one. And that's it. I'll leave you with the last couple of seconds just to enjoy the music, and we can take a look at the finished product in a couple of different colors. I hope you found this useful. If you like the guide, do let me know. And there we are guys, what did you think? Does that work for you? Any colours can work. I went with purple because it's a really good colour to contrast with the green, but reds look great, blues look great, oranges, yellows, absolutely anything. What colour do you do your power weapons? Let me know down below. If you've not already, please do hit that subscribe button, hit the bell. If you know somebody that might get some value from this video, please do share it with them. As you know, what I'm trying to do is make some good content and give something back to the community that's given me so much. If you didn't know, every two weeks I co-host a podcast. You can find out more about that over at droppod.info. But until next time, guys, remember, if you're going to do crack, make sure it's plastic. See ya!